In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you never cease to relate to us in various amazing and creative ways. Through the wonders of technology, though not face to face, you allow our ideas to be shared with ease despite physical distance. You bring us closer to each other in an instance and even to strangers. You help us build new friendships as your virtual messengers. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire us as we begin this online gathering. Bless everyone who toil to make this project possible, the speakers, the facilitators, the technical crew, as well as the participants and viewers. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the third session of the Korean Voters Education Webinar Series. We are webcasting live from Father Saturnino Urias University, Butuan City, Philippines. This is Rochelle Valencia, a faculty member of the Social Sciences Division of the Arts and Sciences Program of this university, and we are happy to be with you. Joining me this afternoon as technical assistant is my colleague, Ms. Friday Hadumas. We would like to acknowledge our students and our colleagues, our fellow employees of this university who are joining us right now through Zoom and FB Live. We also have some guests coming all the way from Taguig and other parts of Metro Manila who join us today for this session. For the webinar guidelines, please look at this, um, the rules that we have for this webinar. Can we flash the webinar guidelines, please? So we'll have a guided discussion in this very interesting topic, which we are going to talk about this afternoon. Open forum. For those who would like to ask your questions, you can use the chat box in FB Live comment section. And for those joining us through Zoom, you can use the chat box. You are allowed one question and another follow up if there is a need. To avoid untoward incidents, we are turning off the microphone of the participants throughout the session. Everyone is expected to serve to observe proper decorum since this is an academic gathering online though it is. In the spirit of accountability, may we ask you to change your name uh, in your Zoom, for our Zoom participants, use this format, program course, and then your initial, the initials of your course, GE102, for example, and then your complete name. You can see the examples right there. And only participants with the prescribed name format will be allowed in the meeting room. Be circumspect and respectful at all times especially when you share your opinions in the comment section. Be reminded that this is an academic assembly. There you go. And last 
We had our game. We had a game at the end of each session, and that serves actually as your assessment. And we would like to congratulate our five winners of last Friday's session. So here are the names of our winners. Can we have the names? By the way, we are asking the winners to stay put. Uh, one of the faculty members of the social sciences will contact you through FSUU Learn. Congratulations to Phoebe Ann Durano, Alexandria Yu, we have Christine Ann Cobilias, Emily Nuer, and Christian Art Peter. So how do you join this? We will be having, uh, we'll be giving you a link through your FSUU Learn folder. You'll be given a link in that e-class for the game, which you can join. And please don't forget to take a screenshot of your results, the results of the game. And don't forget also to get the um, certificate of participation at the end of the session because you will be uploading those two in your respective GE classes. And that will be your assessment. So don't forget the screenshot of your uh, results of the game and the certificate of participation. Before we proceed further, we would like to give you the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Research of this university for his welcome remarks. We give you Reverend Father Randy Jasper C. Ojige. Faculty, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this third session of our Urian Voters Education webinar series on the topic historical revisionism and its implication on the voters' decision. Indeed, history lies at the very heart of education. Experience is the best teacher and with good and responsible historiography, we hope to learn through lessons from history. As an academic institution, it is our responsibility to faithfully transmit events and lessons from the past with tools of critical pedagogy at our disposal to make sure that efforts trying to tamper with facts and data are unmasked and deconstructed. I thank the Social Science Division of FSUU for this initiative this laudable undertaking manifests your commitment to our values as a Catholic institution of higher learning. May this learning session be fruitful as we strive to participate in the construction of a better country for ourselves and for those who will come after us. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Father Randy. We are looking forward to this very interesting topic we have today on this third session of the Urian Voters Education Webinar Series. And again, we would like to say hello to our participants who are joining us live through Facebook and our Zoom participants. Today is April 28, and election day is only 11 days away. As we approach the national and local elections on May 9, we are, looking, we are holding this voters' education series to help you discern and choose wisely the leaders who will be ruling over us for the next six years. Here is a short video to give you a context of our situation. The Philippine national elections is less than a month away. Who will you vote for? Have you decided? Why will you vote for these people? And why not? Through the Orient Poll survey, majority of the Respondents from the tertiary level show that fake news and historical revisionism influence their choices. FSUU values how important and critical this democratic exercise is and mobilizes to educate and remind the Orient community on how important it is to critically discern in choosing the country's future leaders grounded on the university core values. Voting is a right, a privilege, 
but most of all, a responsibility. FSUU aims to breed responsible, rational, and radical voters through this webinar series. Remember, information shapes decisions. Let us contribute to a community of well-informed people. Thank you very much for that situationer that will help us put ourselves into the context. As mentioned earlier, historical revisionism, um, admittedly, according to the respondents, has, a, has an impact on their, um, on their decision as voters. That is why we are holding this, particularly this session, to help us discern better and look more closely into that issue that is proliferated right now that is all around, it is all over the social media. Our resource speaker for this afternoon is a history lecturer at the Ateneo de Manila University, Institute of Formation and Religious Studies and in SOFA Design Institute. He obtained a bachelor's degree in history from the University of the Philippines Diliman campus and he is also finishing there his master's in public administration. He authored Bayani Biographies, Jose Rizal, and he is also the co-author of Bayani Biographies, Andres Bonifacio. Both books are published by Cahel Press. A practitioner of public history, he has worked with the Martial Law Chronicles Project, Active Vista, Dakila Philippine Collective for Modern Heroism, and the Human Rights Violations Victims Memorial Commission in training educators and teaching youth leaders the lessons of human rights, democracy, and freedom through the history of martial law and our struggle against the dictatorship. Fellow Uriens and our guest, we give you Professor John Ray Ramos. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon at isang makasaysayang araw sa lahat. Ayan. So, uh, let me share lang the screen. So, for today, um, we will be talking about a topic or let's say a subject na kumbaga ay very controversial as well as very relevant in terms of in relation to the upcoming national elections. It's about historical revisionism and its implications on voters' education. Actually, I really love the, the motto of the webinar series wherein information shapes decisions. And we know that uh, information is carried by multiple mediums. Ibig sabihin ay uh, we get information from multiple sources, uh, especially right now at the time of TikTok, online, social media, Etc. Everything could be a source of information, but not all informations are quite reliable. Kumbaga. And especially when we talk about Philippine history, uh, there is a lot of information as well as false information na alam natin na nagkumakalat uh, right now in social media because of certain political um, situations. Ayan. So to start my lecture, um, let me start with a story, okay? Uh, and that story is related to one of our national heroes, uh, Dr. Jose Rizal. Uh, it is the story that many of you are quite familiar with, or alam yun na, ito yung gamu-gamu, yung, yung mag-inang gamu-gamu, or the story of the moth and the flame. Okay, so the story of the moth and the flame, as a review for those who, who are unfamiliar, uh, one day or one night, habang nag-aaral yung batang Rizal, napansin ng kanyang mother na si Doña Chadora that the young Rizal was not listening to the story or hindi siya nakikinig sa habang nagtuturo or dun sa binabasa ni Rizal, he, he, Rizal was not paying attention. So the mother asked, why are you not concentrating on your reading? Bakit hindi ka, bakit, ano, hindi ka focus sa pagbabasa mo? Ayun, sorry mami kasi, sabi ng batang Rizal, because uh, I was distracted. Uh, I was watching the two um, moths or yung dalawang gamo-gamo na lum lumilipad around the flame ng kanilang gasera. And then the mother, Doña Chaldora, told the story na merong mag-inang gamo-gamo wherein the mother gamo-gamo warned the young moth na do not go near the light. Ayan. So, huwag kang lalapit sa liwanag or 
else something bad will happen to you. Okay, and then one night when the mother moth was away, the young moth was so attracted to the light of the flame, the young moth went near the light until okay, the moth's wings are burned. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, nasunog yung batang gamo-gamo at siya ay namatay. So, let me ask the participants here. So, medyo meron akong hihingin na audience participation. Kindly input sa chat, what do you think is the moral of this story? Okay, of the moth and the flame. Now, this is from the memoirs of the young Rizal. For Especially for those who are studying the Rizal course right now, uh, I hope na nabasa nyo ito. Okay, so what do you think is the moral or the lesson of the story. Okay. So, according to Rizal, uh, he himself, uh, he doesn't, he didn't know yung, uh, yung moral of the story. I didn't know what the lesson meant. Ayan, yun yung nakasulat sa, sa memoir niya, nung bata siya, or dun sa kanyang diary. But, ayan, we, we already have some answers. So we should always listen to the parents. Uh, it should be the focus is obedience. Yeah, always listen to your parents. Okay, but let me give you an alternative explanation. Okay, some would say, or most of the time, this story is interpreted in a way na um, wag kang lalapit sa liwanag, ayan, or be obedient. Ayan. Uh, and... This story is quite symbolic in the life of Rizal. And the way it is interpreted ay parang ito ay warning ng kanyang nanay na huwag kang lalapit sa liwanag kundi ay mapapahama ka. Pero yung si Rizal ay ano, eventually ay napahamak because yung kanyang paglapit sa liwanag. So it's interpreted in a way na parang prophetic daw yung, yung kwento na ito. But rather, let me give you an alternative interpretation. Do you think... If Rizal really listened okay, to the story of the moth and the flame and isinabuhay niya yung lesson na ito, do you think we will have a Jose Rizal? Do you think that we will have one of our most important national heroes? I don't think so. Kasi he, may, he will not study in abroad. He will not write the things that he wrote. He will not write the Noli, the El Fili, and all the important writings that he did. Okay, but let me tell you something or let me tell you another interpretation. If the light symbolizes the truth, okay, if the light symbolizes yung katotohanan, knowledge, kumbaga, the truth, okay, is it better to be kept in the dark or to go near the truth, to go near the light? Okay, what do you think? Okay, of course, syempre, syempre go near kasi the light gives us something good. The truth sets us free. Kumbaga. Ayan. So, kumbaga, the light in symbolism, in our symbolism, is something that's positive and is not something na, ano, na kailangan nating patayin or something that we should put out. The light of truth will set us free always. But why is it in our society, okay, when we go near the truth, the truth parang pinapahamak tayo. Kumbaga, the truth hurts us. Ayan, the truth hurts but it sets us free. Kumbaga. Or why do people who express the truth, who share the truth, who tell the story of the truth, most of the times they are the ones who get discredited, they are the ones who get um, persecuted, they are the ones who get killed. Okay, ano nangyayari? For example, if one whistle blows a corruption. Okay, hindi siya paniniwalaan, sisiraan siya, kakasuhan, makukulong, even if totoo yung kanyang sinasabi. So, that is somewhat related to the story of the moth and the flame. Actually, the, the light of truth, okay, will not kill us. Okay, the light will not kill us. But what kills us or what makes us fear the truth are the people who take advantage of the darkness. Hindi tayo ipapahamak ng liwanag ng katotohanan, kundi hahamakin tayo ng mga taong nakikinabang sa dilim. And that is one of the tragedy tragedies of our society. What That's one of the tragedies of our history. Na hindi tayo mapapahamak sa katotohanan, hahamakin tayo ng mga nakikinabang sa dilim. 
So that's why, yun nga, information, good information gives us better decisions. But if people in power don't want us to make good decisions, then they will keep us from the, in the dark. They will keep us away from the light. And that is some another interpretation of the story of Jose Rizal. And what I did, yung ginaw, ginawa ko, that I presented you one story but two interpretations is an example of historical revisionism. And yung ginamit ko is a positive revisionism because I emphasize on, on certain values. I emphasize on good values, kumbaga. So this is an example of historical revisionism when it comes to telling a story about our past and our society, kumbaga. And to continue yung symbolism na ito, that the light will set us free and or the truth will set us free. But yung tragedy sa lipunan natin is reflected in another writing by one of our martyrs or one of our historical figures as well. If you recall yung inyong Florante at Laura, which is required reading in high school, uh, there, there is a part there wherein Francisco Balagtas is actually writing about Philippine society. He said, okay, let me just ano, read, Sa loob at labas ng bayan kong sawi, kaliluhan siyang nangyayaring hari. Kagaling at bait ay nalulugami, ininis sa hukay at dusat pigati. Ang magandang asal ay itinupukol sa laot ng dagat ng dusat linggatong. So, okay, it's deep Tagalog. And I know na you are not native Tagalog uh, speakers. But uh, let me interpret this. Inside and outside of my tragic nation, okay, treachery, reason at katwiran is subdued and being buried alive. And Balagtas continues saying, Ngunit ang lilo at masamang loob sa trono ng puri ay iniluluklok. Kung sino pa ang masama ang loob, he who is evil is the one being uh, worship, kumbaga, is the one who is being put into positions of power. Okay? Kung sino yung may asal hayop, magandang mabangong insenso pa ang ating inilalagay. So as early as 1838, Balagtas was saying about saying something about our Philippine society. Okay, even though na, it was still a time that we are under the Spaniards, saying that there is somewhat a tragedy in our society wherein we don't listen to reason. We don't listen to truth. We don't listen sa kung ano yung makatwiran, sinasabi. Ngunit kung ano yung masama, kung ano yung hindi totoo, kung sino pa yung, um, kung sino pa yung hindi nagsasabi ng totoo, siya pa yung nilalagay natin in positions of power. Uh, they are the ones who we select in our votes, for example. It's not the good people, but we, we select the people who are real, who don't show any pretensions. But and that and ang problem is that those uh, no pretensions meaning they're showing their true colors and ayun, we value their we value their lack of pretensions rather than good values kumbaga. So that's one thing na very common uh, back then and even today. Sino nga ba yung mga leaders na pinipili natin? Okay, and all of them are saying that we should be selecting them, okay, because for the sake of, yun, para sa progress, for unity, etc. But to continue on this, Rizal warned us, okay, that neither obscurantism, obscurantism means hiding the truth, neither hiding the truth nor fanaticism have ever united the people. Sinasabi, or Rizal warned, that we will never get unity if that unity is based on lies if that unity is based on hiding the truth and fanaticism okay and even suppressing or oppressing the truth pero sinasabi ni Rizal or Rizal promises liberty kalayaan rights karapatan and love pag-ibig they can unite different races under the same flag under one aspiration and towards one destiny. Okay? So, 
that's one thing. That's why the truth matters. That's why good historical narratives matter. Okay? And we should be selecting our uh, candidates based on the truth, based on track record, and not just on promises or things that are based on lies or distortion. Because, ayun, because sila, yung mga lilo, like what Balagtas said, lilo, treacherous people, okay, they who deceive. Actually, Rizal warned in this essay of his, paglinlang sa lupang tinubuan, or to deceive the native land, that to deceive the native land is the greatest crime of all crimes. Ayan. So, this is something that we should be remembering when we are selecting people as well as listening to their narratives. Okay. So, let's go now to the nature of narratives. Okay. Elections are not just struggles for power, but they are also clashes of narratives. Each candidate carry with him or her a narrative, a myth, a worldview, and a promise. Ayan. So all of them, all of these are being carried and these are not explicitly visible. Ayun. Sa pag-aaral natin about history as well as society, okay, these things are the things na hindi obvious. And we should be applying critical thinking if we want to know or we want to read beyond what they are saying. The, the, the point of studying history for those who are studying readings in Philippine history, for those who are studying the Rizal course and knowing the self, etc. Um, the point of studying uh, these things in applying critical thinking is the ability to read between the lines. Hindi porket sinabi ay totoo na. Ayan. Because in the nature of elections, when people campaign for their candidates when people campaign about their platforms ayun na ako sana ang piliin niyo etc okay they always carry with them narratives promises and even myths about themselves or about their past and even certain world views about how to approach problems kung paano fineframe yung problems in society etc so narratives are being fought over during elections. And this is something that we should be critical about. Ayan. So, and in particular, uh, when we talk about stories from the past, okay, pag sinabi natin history, we might be actually referring to two different things. Okay. Uh, when we talk about society, when we talk about the past, ayan, um, we can either refer to it bilang the past or nakaraan or we will be talk we are talking about it as a narrative ayan so actually these two things are different from one another because the past are i are the things that actually happened versus the narrative which are stories that we learn from um that we learn about that particular event kumbaga so we create accounts based on interpreting evidence explaining yung nangyayari or explaining what is the situation at that time and yung hindsight na tinatawag okay let me give you an example about this when we talk about the history of for example um Jose Rizal ayan so the execution of Jose Rizal December 30 1896 okay we interpret the evidence. It actually happened. Talagang nabuhay si Rizal, binaril si Rizal. And there is evidence supporting it. There is an execution photo. There is There are accounts of him being a person, being alive. He is an actual historical person who was executed in December 30 of 1896. So we ask, why was he executed? So, dito papasok yung historical explanation. He was executed because um, there was a rebellion led by the Katipunan and Rizal was, a, was an inspirational figure to the Katipunan. And the Spaniards believe if we killed Rizal, then uh, the, the rebellion of the Katipunan will be over. Okay. So there is one thing about historical events. When people decide, ayan, when people decide to do 
certain things. Halimbawa, barilin si Rizal, uh, start a revolution, or elect a person, okay? We don't know the outcome of our decisions. Okay. So, for example, the dilemma of the Spaniards, if we kill Rizal, do we end the, do we end the rebellion? For the Katipuneros, if we start the revolution, will we win against the Spaniards? Or for us in the elections, if we select and elect this person, will he or she be a good leader? We don't know yet. Okay. Pero, those things na nangyari in the past, okay, we can already observe the effects of their, of their decisions. Meaning, we have hindsight. We have the benefit of hindsight. So, this is one of the things that makes history something, something that we can learn from. Because the effects of the decisions of those who came before us, we can already observe the effects or there, we already know the answer. The Spaniards were, were not able to end the rebellion of the Katipunan. The Katipuneros were victorious against the Spaniards, pero hindi victorious against the Americans. And for the election, for example, the person we elected became a good leader or became a corrupt leader. Okay? So, uh, yun yung things na um, we study on about history. That's why we study about history because we're trying to get lessons based from the past, using past examples so that it can perhaps guide us in our decisions in the present, especially in this coming elections. So, we should be selecting, for example, candidates based on their history we should be for, and another thing is that we are we should be trying to solve our problems based on how the problems in society progressed okay another use of the word history is in the field for example in medicine sinasabi uh, for a doctor to treat a patient's uh, disease meron tinatawag na medical history okay so the the doctor will try to cure the patient based on the person's medical history. Okay. Ang problem, kung mali ang history na ibinigay ng patient or kung mali ang medical history na, na tinignan or nakita ng doctor or pinaniwalaan ng doctor, okay, bad medical history actually will kill the patient or will worsen the disease of the patient. Ayun. So, on that literal sense, bad history kills. Wrong history kills. Ayun. And in a similar way, a wrong view of history about our society can make or break our nation. Okay? Because each narrative contains meaning. Okay? So, bawat salaysay ay may saysay based on our tradition of history. Kasaysayan. It's a salaysay with saisai. It's a narrative with meaning. And the nature here of history in relation to our past is that we have one past and there are so many narratives. We can talk about, for example, um, the narrative of the, of the story that I used earlier, the moth and the flame. It has multiple interpretations. Okay, one, for example, one past, one event. A World War II or even martial law period, it's one past but many narratives based on many experiences. Okay. And the problem and another challenge here is that for every narrative, there can be a different meaning. Okay. Bawat salaysay ay may pinahihiwatig na saysay. So how should we be looking at our history in this, in this essence? Okay, let me sh share to you a slide that I use when I talk about Philippine history to grade 5 and grade 6 students. Ayan. So, um, because unfortunately, Philippine history is only a dedicated subject only in grade 5 and grade 6 in basic education. And there's no dedicated Philippine history in the junior or senior high school, except if you are Hume struck on senior high school. So when I talk to grade 5 and grade 6 students about history, if we want to learn from our history, 
or if you want to study history, kung bubuksan, uh, kung ano ang dapat buksan, or what should we be opening when we are looking at history? Ayan. Ano ang bubuksan natin kung titingin sa kasaysayan? Of course, we have to open our minds. Okay? We should be opening our eyes. We should be opening our ears to to eyes and ears as well as we should be opening books and other reliable sources but also one of the most important things to open is to open our hearts and so meaning we should be opening uh, our humanity because history um, should not be treated as something na parang um, parang desensitized okay meaning that uh, even though we are talking about people Okay, usually, for example, if we talk about a history of a conflict or history of a war, okay, sasabihin na, um, for example, um, in a battle in, 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 halimbawa, in Marawi, ayan. So, there are a number of people who died, ayan. So, sabihin natin na, ah, a few hundred lang naman yun namatay. So, Halimbawa, let's give a casualty count. For example, 500 people died in the battle. Okay. There might be multiple interpretations. Sinasabing, it's not that big kasi 500 lang daw na namatay, but it became desensitized. So when I say we should be opening our humanity to, to our narrative surpass, okay, we should be looking at that 500 people who lost their lives as people. Ibig sabihin, yung limang daang taong ito ay ama, their fathers, their mothers, their children, okay, who have their own lives, who lost their future who, aside from their lives, who lost their future, who lost their hopes, etc. So one death is actually a tragedy. What is 500 more? Okay, so sabihin na um, 20 million or 6 million people ang pinatay ni Hitler. Okay? Tapos sasabihin mo, konti lang yon Pero six, 6 million persons yon Okay? And what more the ano? Okay? The 20, the 30 or 20,000 na tinorture ng martial law. Okay? So, these things are things that we should be looking on, looking with our humanity open. Kumbaga. Ayan. So, what are the issues that we encounter? Why do we have these problems of history being revised or being distorted? Actually, the problem lies with certain things that necessitates us to fact check. Ayan. Now, there is a problem because there is an existing uh, culture of anti-intellectualism or natin smart shaming. Then there is the phenomenon of disinformation or fake news as well as yung tinatawag natin na pseudo-intellectualism, which includes uh, conspiracy theories at iba pang mga cloud chasers online. They talk about history, pero sinasabi nila na mas magaling sila compared to actual historians, etc. Also, there are some who exhibit malicious online behavior and trolling. They throw around narratives na hindi makatao or sinasabi yung mga... Yung mga certain people, hindi sila dapat ituring na tao. Ayan. Ayan. So, and then we have the problem as well of historical distortion or denialism. Ayan. So, these are the reasons why it's necessary to fact check and to really check kung yung nakita natin na post in Facebook is actually real. If the video that we watch on YouTube and TikTok are they factual or are they real? Okay. And even if they are somewhat factual, are they humane? Ayan. So let's look into this certain problem. So uh, there's a simple article on smart shaming on GMA News Online. You can check this article. They say that there is somewhat a Pinoy culture of anti-intellectualism na tinatawag. So ang example niyan, of course, would be the words, um, uh, yan, bida-bida, dami mong alam, oh, deep, edi wow, nosebleed. And these things are, uh, 
uh, actually mga dapat iniiwasan natin itong mga to. Okay, for example, if you try to explain something, okay, um, and then sasabihin ng person na kausap mo, edi wow. Ayun. So, it discourages discourse, which is something that is bad for voter education. Kasi you're explaining that this person is a good choice or this person is a bad choice because of facts, facts, facts. Tapos ang sasabihin sa'yo, eh di wow. Ayan. So it discourages critical um, discourse between people. Ayan. So kaya dapat discourage ito. Ayan. So yun yung isang problem when it comes to our education and society. And then, there is also the effect of what we call Dunning-Kruger effect. Ayan, sinasabi, most ignorant but, ayan, we can be uh, ignorant about issues but we are super confident that we know things even though konti lang yung alam natin. Okay, and this phenomenon can be explained in psychology as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Na yung confidence daw natin ay mataas kung konti lang yung alam natin or pag-expert na tayo. Ayun. So in between, hindi tayo confident. Pero yun nga, we should be looking at these things na ayun, uh, is the person that we are listening to really an expert or yung talagang bidabida lang? Ayan. Or mema lang? Ayun. So uh, this is one of the effect. And this is more... Uh, evident or visible in online trolls Ayan. or doon sa comment section uh, the place where we dread reading in in social media the comment section okay and then we also have the nature of pseudo history wherein we treat myths legends and other fake hoaxes as literal truth and some would claim that they are on a mission to support Uh, or to correct history. And yun nga, there is a grand conspiracy to hide or suppress yung mga truth. Ayan. So that's also another problem. And then they would say that we historians or yung mga experts talaga or in the field or those who are really knowledgeable would say that, oh, you're all biased. You're all... Uh, the journalists are all biased. The writers... In newspapers, there are bias, etc. So, actually, every one of us has biases. Okay, the bias is what is a tendency to believe that some ideas are better. Usually, treating others or usually leads to treating other ideas unfairly. Okay, we all have biases. Okay, and part of critical thinking means being critical about ourselves as well. Meaning that we should be able to catch ourselves being biased. Okay? We, uh, students of history, we should be wary of our biases because we cannot totally remove it, but we could recognize it, minimize it, and fairly treat yung topic na pinag-uusapan natin with less bias. Ayan. So, this, all of us have biases. But the question is, where does our bias lie? Ayan. So, and then, of course, dito napapasok yung problem of respect our opinions, etc. So, a, an opinion basically is a belief. Okay, it's a view or a judgment, but not necessarily based on fact and knowledge. Okay, not all opinions are created equal. Okay, it's also an opinion is an estimation of the quality or worth of someone or something. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, when you give an opinion, you already gave away. Okay. You already weighed your, your, your points that these are valid. But what really makes an opinion valid? Yun yung isang question on it. So, my stand on that is that not narratives or statements, opinions, even though some of it or part of it is true. A question is, makatwiran ba ito? Or is it reasonable? Okay. So, narratives are usually com is composed of a fact plus an interpretation because facts cannot explain themselves. Like the way that I use the example of 
people who died, for example, in a conflict or people who were tortured during the martial law period, they are facts. Okay, The numbers of the people who are victims are facts. But the way you interpret yung number na ito will constitute your opinion as well as your narrative. Okay. So, sasabihin mo, yung 20 plus thousand na, na torture, okay lang yan. Then you already gave a judgment. Ayan. You all, so, ba't ang tanong, makatwiran ba ito? Or is it reasonable? Okay. Um, reason is somewhat gives injustice doon sa isang Filipino word which means katwiran or which uh, is actually katwiran. Katwiran is a very nice um, concept and I'm not sure if there is an equivalent uh, word in 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 the in other languages in the Philippines but katwiran is uh, based rin sa isang Tagalog word which is tuwid. Ayan. And katwiran usually if something is makatwiran, we usually translate it as reasonable. Okay? But it lacks the moral depth of katwiran as an original term. Kasi our ancestors, usually, based on our language, when we say that something is tuwid or makatwiran, it's something that is righteous. Ayun. And Katwiran or this kind of reasoning should be great, should be based on what is true, what is free, what is critical, as well as what is humane. Kung ano yung totoo, tuwid, malaya, critical, at makatao. Ayan. So, uh, we can find this word, for example, in the writings of the Katipunan, who emphasizes that katwiran is... Um, is a goal that we should be striving for. We also re read this in the Florante Plaura, um, wherein the katwiran is being buried in our society, which is a tragedy in our society. Na the notion of katwiran, what is good, what is righteous, what is free, and what is humane, is being buried. And this value is something that is being lost in the conflict of narratives in these coming elections. Or in any elections. Ayan. So, which makes it kinda, it's really sad <laughs> talaga. Ayan. So, the point, Ren, is that we should be careful as well of clickbait content. And if you're familiar with clickbait content in, in social media, ayan, uh, we have certain red flags like the real true history of, facts historians don't want you to know, the history hidden truth, hidden facts, even the word alternative as well as the word truth. Ayun. So let me tell you, okay, there is no grand conspiracy of us historians hiding anything. Ayun. And we always just, na, ano, kami mga historians, we're, we're natural marites. Ayun. Actually, mga likas kami mga chismosa, chismosa. So there's no benefit for us in hiding anything. And we like to tell stories. So there's no grand conspiracy that we are hiding anything from about our past. Ayan. So we should be always que question narratives. We should ask, what is the source? What's the, what's the evidence to prove this point? Why did that person say it? Okay. How did he say it? In a concerned way or in a mocking way? Okay. Where did he say it and when? Okay, and what does this message or what does this post want me to believe in? Or what does it want me to do? Okay. So, critical thinking or means asking questions, the relevant and important questions. Okay, then we go to the main reason of why um, these things matter. Okay, we learn history through narratives. Okay, and history as narratives, okay, are not set in stone. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila nakataga sa bato. Okay, histories or the stories about our past change. Because, for example, we need to update these things. Okay, so we need to rewrite history because to 
or para maging relevant siya, for example, in the present uh, condition. So there are two kinds of historical revisionism. One is the scholarly re-examination of existing narratives and facts. And the second one, the negative one, the more dangerous one, is the actual distortion of historical records or facts, uh, which is su- or it is subjected to illegitimate and heavily biased interpretation and be used in political agenda. So we have two kinds of revisionism, positive revisionism and negative revisionism. So um, positive revisionism or the way we write history is that we write history or we study history because we want to investigate about our past. We want to tell a story. For example, yung story of the Filipino people. We want to establish our identity because narratives establish our identity as well. Ayan. We also want to verify and document historical events. Nangyari ba talaga ito? Ayan. And we also reanalyze established narratives. So the example is the story of the moth and the flame that we did earlier. Historical research or studying history also tries to disprove myths, fables, and other misconceptions as well as raise more questions. So ito yung talagang ginagawa when we study history. Or even kahit na, not because we, we are required to study history, but because we are trying to do research, for example, about our candidates, about their platforms. Okay? We are investigating their past. We are investigating their history including their family histories or their uh, service or track record history. Okay, so these are the things. By studying their past, where you're studying the history of their actions, we narrate their story. We establish their identity. Are they righteous or are they corrupt? Okay, we verify um, the things that they did. Okay, as well as reanalyze what our biases on that candidate as well. Ayun. So that's why we should be, this is how we study uh, the past or this is how we do historical research. So to go to the positive revisionism, there are actually three kinds. Okay, one is act- actually evidence-based or we try to change the, we update knowledge. Ayan. So ito yung trabaho talaga ng mga historians, naming mga historians. We correct yung mga yung history based on new information or verified information. An example of that is that, uh, for example, one, Rizal didn't write the sa aking mga kababata na point. Um, also, um, uh, another evidence-based revision is that hindi totoo that Andres Bonifacio is a person who is uneducated. Actually, uh, he is he is self-taught. He studied in what is equivalent to senior high and he studied by himself and he likes to read, etc. So uh, these are evidence-based uh, revision. We are correcting the facts because there is new evidence to support it. Okay. Or uh, another one is that we do significance-driven revision, meaning we in- reinterpret uh, the established facts. Ayan. So, baka, baka iba yung moral ng story ng Moth and the Flame. So, that's another significance-driven revision as well as value-driven revision. Ayan. So, pag saring value-driven revision, we are correcting values or we are correcting narratives kasi yung past narrative could be, halimbawa, sexist, racist, and ano, or it disregards certain people. So, uh, kailangan ina-update yung history because we are updating it to our present uh, standards. Ayun, kasi, and what, that's one of the natures of studying history. Our present affects how we view our past. Ayan. So, that's why ano, we continue to study history. Ayan. We continue to rewrite history. But it should be grounded on facts. It should be grounded on the truth. Uh, there is a method. There is a process. Okay? And there is uh, there are standards in writing history. 
Ayan. Pero, the bad thing about historical revisionism is that it has a negative side. Or it has a negative kind of, there is a negative kind of revisionism. Yung tinatawag na distortion. So, a warning for all of us, okay, in creating or writing narratives, okay, historical narrative should not, ayan, distort facts and establish histories. It should not spread myths and fake narratives. It should not, uh, it should not deny Um, or cover up abuses and atrocities. It should also never normalize or defend wrongdoings. Okay? It should not disenfranchise people, invalidate human suffering and trauma, and forward selfish agendas. And dito papasok, or perhaps dito papasok, at dito natin i-address yung elephant in the room. Okay? And what is the elephant in the room, chat? Ayan, sige. <laughs> Okay, comments. Yeah. Okay. Answer. Yeah. What is the elephant in the room? Okay, ano yung topic na tinutukoy ko? Yeah. Sige. So, for example, ng distorting ng facts. Sasabihin na hindi naman daw totoo yung human rights violations on a certain period. Okay. Spread myths. Halimbawa, yung mga, yung Taliano gold. Ayan, hindi naman totoo yan. Okay, cover up or deny abuses and atrocities. Okay, di naman daw totoo yung human rights violations. Or normalize and defend wrongdoings. Ayun, okay lang na corrupt, marami namang nagawa. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin nun? Okay, if you believe that narrative, okay, as a voter, if you believe that narrative, okay, iboboto ko siya kasi marami siyang nagawa kahit na mag, marami siyang ninakaw kasi marami siyang nagawa. What you're doing is that you are defending and normalizing corruption. Diba? So, can't we have maraming nagawa tapos hindi corrupt? So, that's an effect of historical distortion or we're in it distorts our values as well. Ayan. Di na distort nito yung standards natin in choosing a candidate in choosing or electing a candidate. Okay. And this is what makes historical distortion distortion or historical revi negative revisionism or historical denialism, which in it distorts facts, it spreads myths, it denies abuses and atrocities, it normalizes wrongdoings, it disenfranchises minorities, it invalidates suffering and trauma, Sasabing yung mga na-torture nung panahon ng diktadura, deserve nila ito kasi rebelde sila. Yung mga namatay ng tokhang, okay lang yan. Kasi mga adik naman sila. So that kinds of narrative invalidate human suffering and trauma. Which is inhumane in the very nature. And this happens because there's a forwarding of a political agenda. Ayan. So we should not be using history in this way. Okay? And this is something that we should be guarding against. Okay? This is negative revisionism. This is historical distortion. Ito yung nangyayari. So the narratives that we encounter might be doing this to us. Okay? Yung video na pinapanood natin on YouTube, on TikTok, baka ito yung nakikita natin tapos pinaniniwalaan natin. Okay. So, a warning from Ben Okri, a Nigerian author, writer. Um, he wrote the book Why Do We Tell Children's Stories? He said, or he wrote, to poison a nation, poison its stories. A demoralized nation tells demoralized stories to itself. Beware of the storytellers who are not fully conscious of the importance of their gifts and who are irresponsible in the application of their art. Ayan. So, yun yung isang warning. Narratives are stories. Okay? Poisoned narratives poison our societies. They poison our stories. Each candidate carries a narrative. It could be a cure, it could be a... or it could be a poison. 
Okay? It might be a bitter pill sometimes or it could be a bitter poison. Yeah. So that's why we should be looking into the narratives of of our candidates. Ayun. And yeah, sir, di ba dapat history should be neutral or the way we we look at the elections and the candidates we should be neutral, sir. Okay, actually, okay, neutrality is problematic. Okay. We might say that ayun, we should be studying history objectively. Ayan. So meaning it should be neutral. But objectivity in research is not equivalent to neutrality. Ayan. Kasi when you say objective, it means that you are sticking to the facts. Okay. But facts cannot interpret themselves. Ayan. So objectivity means accuracy to the facts. Not, hindi ibig sabihin na taking sides. Your side should be on the data. Ayan. But the problem is how do you interpret the data? So the study of history is actually both objective and subjective. Kasi you are objective to the data, but you are subjective to its interpretation. Ayan. So yun yung nature ng studying history. But objectivity should not be equated to neutrality. Kasi neutrality, especially in political and social situations, is dangerous. Okay. Um, one author, Ellie Wiesel, said, We must always take sides because neutrality usually helps the oppressor, never the victim. Pay silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Sometimes we must interfere when human lives are endangered. When human dignity is in jeopardy, national borders are and sensitivities became or become irrelevant. Okay? So, bilang mga mamamayan, ito yung isang bagay na usually hindi na-highlight or we as citizens. That, okay, all of us are citizens and we are not powerless. Okay? To help and even call out wrongdoings. Okay? So, these are dilemmas actually that we encounter in our society. Okay, there is something that's bad that's happening. Corruption is happening. Lies are happening. Do we just turn a blind eye on these things? Or we should be calling these out? Out. Okay? A simple say simple click on Facebook saying you report this as ano, as fake news is already an, taking action. Not sharing false information is also an action. Actions include doing and not doing things. Okay? So, yun, we cannot do everything but we can do something. That's the challenge. Okay? So, for every narrative that we believe, for every narrative that we tell, we already made a moral decision on it. Okay? So, there's already an ethical decision for every interpretation of history. Ayun. So, doon na papasok yung, yung nature. For example, when we discuss the history, for example, of ayun, addressing the elephant in the room, for example, the history of martial law, wherein it's full of misconceptions and political and sensitive subjects. Ayun. And meron talagang failure to connect it to the present. And historical distortion actually plays with our present political frustrations. At tinutukoy natin, or we use an escape goat saying, kalimbawa, EDSA was a mistake. Ganyan. But the story of what happened after EDSA is that we had a fresh start in our democracy. But what happened after that? It's a different, it's somewhat a different story. Ayan. That, yun nga, may kumakalat na mga misconceptions as well as half-truths, trolling, etc. Ayan. Marami naman daw na ipatayo ang mga politiko natin. But we should be looking in the way. We should also be changing or revising the way we view yung infrastructure na ginagawa. Hindi lang ng dating mga presidente, kundi yung mga mayor at ng mga governor. Tapos sasabihin nila yung building na ito ay pinagawa ni Honorable Blank. Ayan. So, Kanino na pupunta yung utang na loob? That's, that's another challenge. 
the way that we should be revising this in terms of value-driven revision is that infrastructure like school buildings, bridges, roads are a product are, or are made possible because of our taxes. Lahat tayo nagbabayad ng tax. Kahit na hin- kayo ay students pa, ayun, bawa, yung pera ng nanay at tatay nyo, kinakaltasan yan. Ay napupunta sa tax yan. Yung bawat bilhin nyo ng chichirya or pagkain, may VAT yan. May tax yan. We are all taxpayers. And the projects that are made possible by our leaders are a product of our taxes. But the question is that, how did they utilize these source, these funds? How did they utilize itong mga budget na ito? Okay. So, yun nga, buti may ginawa, pero ang problema, baka may ninakaw sa atin. Which is usually the cases, or most of the case, dun sa, for example, the infrastructure during the martial law period. Okay. And then, of course, there are institutions that we should be building on. The Philippines is a democracy, okay? And we should be enhancing or improving our institutions, okay? Sorry, may, may ingay, nakapitbahay. Ayan. So, ayan. we should be protecting the sanctity of our constitution, the elections, our nature of representation, our courts, free media, etc. So, of course, uh, there is currently the myth of a golden age, wherein distortion happens, historical distortion happens, okay, so nadi-distort yung audio ko, Ayan. because there's a twisting or nitpicking of facts, there is a dehumanization of victims and survivors, okay, the invalidation of suffering and trauma, Okay, denial of corruption and cronyism as well as what we call gaslighting. Okay, sinasabi, mahirap ang Pilipinas kasi kasalanan daw natin. And that's gaslighting. And in the end, historical distortion is an attack on our society as well as our values. Okay, so let's remember, narratives can make or break a nation. Each candidate carries with him or her a certain narrative. Okay? A certain narrative. Okay? Narratives matter because narratives contain ideas, beliefs, as well as values which affect our decisions. Which affect our decisions, actions, and habits, which includes our votes. And our decisions, actions, habits, and votes will ultimately shape our society. Okay? So, ayun. so that's the power of narratives. Okay? That's why there is historical distortion. Okay? There is positive and negative revisionism happening all the time. Okay? So narratives propagated, believe, and legitimized can dictate one's or a society's values, decisions, and actions. That's why being critical of narratives is important. Okay? So let's always question narratives. Okay? For example, that for the candidates, what narrative does my candidate carry or the, my chosen candidate carries? Is it grounded on truth, justice, and freedom? Makatwiran ba yung narratives na sinasabuhay or dinadala ng aking kandidato? Does she or he represent or silence the voiceless and the oppressed? And what does that person inspire? Hate or love? Despair or hope? These are the things that we should be questioning. The narratives that our candidates carry. And in the end, and, okay, the, the elections or this coming elections is a time to revise our narratives. Okay? For example, how do we view our leaders? Do we view them as leaders or as idols or as unquestionable idols? Okay. How do we view the elections? Para bang sabong ang eleksyon? How do we see our country? Is it a poor country? 
because we are poor or is it poor because there are a lot of problems in our country how do we see how do we see ourselves as a people are we are we a weak people tayo bang mga pilipino ay mga walang disiplina or tayo mga pilipino ay kayang magmahal sa ating sariling bayan okay ang pilipino ba ay talunan hindi ba natin kaya ang mga malalaking bansa or may kasaysayan tayo na lumalaban tayo kahit na mas malakas yung kalaban natin. Diba? What are our non-negotiables? And what are the values that we try to uphold? Okay? Should we be compromising our, our independence? Should we be compromising our freedom? Should we be compromising our democracy? Ayan. So, Ayan, it's a really a time of questioning these narratives. And in the end, sir, okay, saan ba talaga tayo dapat kumampi? Sir, kung lahat tayo ay may bias, in the end, saan, da, saan ba dapat yung bias natin? Okay, dahil lahat naman tayo ay bias, sana yung bias natin is tied to the values that are most important to us. Okay. And what are those values? Okay? okay, those values are enshrined in our constitution, actually. And the summary of it is in the 19 is in the preamble. Okay, we, the Filipino nation, we will create, establish a government that embodies our ideals and aspiration. Okay. And what are those values? Okay, what should we be biased on? Saan yung bias natin? It should be on the rule of law, okay? A regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace. Yun. So kung magiging bias tayo, sana ay bias tayo doon sa values na pinaka-importante sa atin. So that's it. Thank you very much. Daghan salamat to our speaker for this very, very um, refreshing take on historical revisionism. I would like to sit in your class for a whole semester and listen to what we have to talk about this. Well, actually, um, he discussed some well important matters in a very, very short period of time, and we could have had this for one whole semester. And we thank you, sir, for enlightening us, giving us another take on what is now being propagated on the social media, what we call historical revisionism. We are now going to have our open forum. We have 15 minutes dedicated for that. And for the Zoom participants, you may write your questions on the chat box. It will be forwarded to us by Ms. Friday Hadumas. For those who are joining us live on Facebook, you can write it in the comment section. And again, that will be forwarded to us and we can ask our speaker, your questions. If you need a follow-up question, you are entitled to another. So, do we have questions now? Let me see. So, while waiting, um, earlier, sir, you said about um, there are people really who are um, discounting or even disenfranchising a fact about our past. And I was really surprised because I am also a history teacher myself. I got one student who said, the 1986 ESA revolution was a farce. I almost fell down from my chair when I, I read that. So indeed, there are people believing in historical revisionism. And again, we would like to ask our uh, participants, key in your questions now so we can ask it to our, um, our speaker. Okay, so let's start. Good afternoon, Paul. Based on what is going on right now, especially that elections is fast coming, can you say that the mo that most of the things we see on social media are products of negative revisionism or historical distortion? But most of my friends believe in these narratives. How can we help them see the light without cutting ties with them? Um. 
it's quite complicated and it's very difficult to change one's mind especially kung yung wait there's a there's a point in one of my lectures saying that um history in a critical study of history uh, we should be careful of treating history as tradition okay pagsabing tradition ng isang bagay uh, is something that is unquestionable it is um, unchangeable it should not be questioned etc so unfortunately many of those who believe yung mga distortionist na narratives in social media they already treat yung certain narratives as tradition as parang parang gospel na nga minsan eh and th- that is something na very dangerous treating something as a gospel it's it's on the border or it's a manifestation of fanaticism nga eh but the problem here is that we cannot change people in a snap it takes process it's it takes time it takes opportunities okay uh, one analogy of doing it is that we kahit na toxic sila um they're also victims of ano of this disinformation campaign okay so ibig sabihin uh, one analogy here is that okay let me ask the audience let me ask the audience naka encounter na ba kayo ng friend na in a toxic relationship tapos hindi sila makahiwa-hiwalay doon sa toxic partner nila. Ayan. Okay. Pwede kayong mag-react ng haha or ng like <laughs> sa Pag-dami ano. Po. Yes. There Parang, are a lot of yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Parang ganun. Yung, yung laging nagsusumbong sa'yo, oh, sinaktan niya ako, niloko niya ako, pero mahal ko pa rin siya, ganyan. Pero hindi ko siya maiwanan, ganyan. Parang ganun ang mindset ng isang taong naniniwala sa sa mga ganun mga distortion. Ayun. Yun, kasi yun, being in a toxic relationship is somewhat re- related to historical distortion kasi parang ginagaslight rin na ano alam mo kung bakit mahirap ang Pilipinas kasi ano kasi tinanggal nyo yung pamilya ko in power ganyan so kasalanan nyo kung bakit hindi maunlad ha huh? <laughs> so ganun ikaw na nga yung niloko ikaw na nga yung nilakawan ikaw na nga yung sinaktan kasalanan mo pa so yun yung isang problem so how do we address a person na how do we help a person na stuck in that toxic cycle how do we help people stuck in toxic relationships actually there's so little that we can do no matter how many times we try to give reason to their minds hindi sila nakikinig Ayun. and we cannot change their mind immediately it needs to be that that it, it's the person who will liberate themselves from that lies. Ayun. And yun nga, even though hindi, yung dead, hindi natin kayang magawa yan sa deadline natin ng May 9, yun yung nakakalungkot. Kasi it really takes a process. It needs an emotional uh, impetus for them na matauhan. Okay, kailangan yung sampal sa kanila ng katotohanan, dapat sa kanila tumama talaga na sa sobrang tindi ng sampal, matatauhan talaga sila. Ayun. So, it really takes time. Tama yung sinabi sa comments. It takes time to persuade. It really takes time. The only thing that we can do is that we can be, we try to be patient and be there. Ayun. And be there for them. But, yun nga, we should also be careful of not making ourselves so stressed kasi kasi ano it really affects our mental health as well so kailangan alagaan rin natin yung sarili natin ayun but ayun the only thing that we can do for people who are stuck in that toxic cycle is that when reality hits them so hard that natauhan sila that we are there to help them process these things so, kumbaga, papasok lang yung role natin. At doon natin may explain na, oo, kasi mali talaga noon, na ganito talaga yung nangyari, totoo ito, yun, naloko ka ng fake na mga post, ganun talaga. So, ayun. It, kahit na ayun, nakikinig sila, hindi pa rin agad, agad na maniniwala yan. Okay? It really takes time. Kailangan reality should 
really hit them. So, uh, how do we? How can we uh, speed up the process? I'm not sure. Siguro ano? Uh, call out uh, wrong facts. Um, share verified. Continue sharing. Okay, verified posts and information. Okay, call out yung mga mali, fake news yan, etc. Report fake posts, etc. So hopefully, ayun, bawat, bawat call out natin, bawat repost natin, perhaps one time or one day, bubukas yung isip nila at puso nila. So yun, siguro yun lang yung <laughs> mapapayo ko. Ayun. Thank you, sir. Sa mga students na nakikinig ngayon, huwag naman kayong manampal, okay? <laughs> Here's another question, sir. How can I think this comes from a young, um, a young listener, a young participant? How can we possibly convince our friends to believe in historical facts when they always say that we were not born yet during that time? Okay, uh, ang analogy kasi dyan sa historical events is that, uh, for example, in martial in the martial law period, um, in the martial law period, the The experience here varies. Okay. Ang isang example dyan, or the analogy, the metaphor is that, for example, may nasusunog na bahay. Ayan. Nasusunog yung bahay, tapos iba-iba yung experience ng mga taong natrap sa loob ng bahay. Iba yung experience at kwento or narrative ng mga taong nasa labas ng bahay na nasusunog. Iba yung kwento ng mga bumbero who... who fight the fire, and iba rin yung kwento ng mga tao far away. For example, three blocks away or nasa kabilang bayan who ano, narinig lang yung sirens pero hindi nakita yung sunog. Ayun. So, that's yun yung situation. Hindi porket mabuti yung experience ng magulang nyo or ng lolo at lola nyo, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi totoo yung experiences ng iba. Okay, meaning, uh, there is, ayan, we should not be discounting or perhaps we should be, I'm not sure, depende kasi rin yan sa dynamics nyo within the family. Na, ano eh, can you call out itong mga maling ano na ito? So, minsan talaga wala na tayong magagawa kung ano, they stick to seniority or they stick to their age. Um, if we want to really, ano, ano, if we want to change your minds, ayun, it really takes time, it takes patience. Um, we cannot convince them, tulad nung example kanina, we cannot convince them at a whim. Ayun. Uh, but, ang magagawa na lang natin is we should not be contributing to the silence, to the silencing of the victims, of those who are traumatized, of those na ano na talagang naka-experience nung masasama masasamang bagay nung diktadura ayan so ayan talaga kung parents minsan wala tayong magagawa diyan but siguro kung ano if they are willing to listen then let's tell them the stories that we research we verified we studied in history class And I think, sir, there is also that issue, um, especially among us Filipinos who are very, um, we revere our elders. And I have friends and students who would say, sabi ng lola ko, sabi ng tatay ko, sabi ng lolo ng lolo ko, etc., etc. And because of that, sabi ng lolo ko, sabi ng nanay ko, they believe easily in the narrative, which is actually, if you look at it in, a, in, in using the, the historical records we have, are actually not true. These are narratives of their elders. So how do we address that kind of uh, situation? Sorry, again? Okay. There are also narratives um, from our students' friends, for example, and they would say, sabi ng lolo ko, sabi ng nanay ko, sabi ng lola ko, and they would insist on it because, as they said, it's from their elders. Mm. And as Filipinos, we always revere our elders. So they take that hook, line, and sinker. But if you examine it, it is actually not true. How yeah. do you address that kind okay. of um, mentality? Kung, 
Okay, kung peer-to-peer naman, siguro engage in critical discourse. And kung ano yung mga natutunan nyo, for example, sa webinar na ito, uh, what you learn in this webinar, not the experiences of martial law varies. Okay? Uh, the, the least thing that we can do is that we call out na, ano, ano kung ayun, wala namang mas- masamang nangyaring nangyari sa lolo ko or sa nanay-tatay ko, and yung pwede nating sagot dyan is buti pa kayo. Ayan. So, you're lucky, basically. But ang hindi rin nila na-realize is that they're also victims kasi it was their taxes who, which was stolen. Uh, and the economic collapse, for example, noong 1982, the entire Philippines was ano, was affected. There was rapid inflation nung nag-collapse yung, nung nagkaroon ng recession yung economy natin because of the massive spending and borrowing of the, for example, during the martial law period. Ayan, yung growth during the first years of martial law were actually because of debt. Ayan. So, ayan, hindi pwedeng sabihin na kasalanan kasi ng mga dilawan yan. Kasi, ayan eh, uh, economic factors that led to the, ayan, economic factors during the martial law period is we, one cannot cause economic collapse unless one that person is the one in charge of the economy. So, ayun. So, it's really mismanagement of the economy nung panahon na yun. So, ayun, to address itong, ano, kung peers natin itong mga to, we can engage in critical discourse. Pero, at the end of the day, ayun nga, ang, my, we have to be patient. Ayun. Huwag natin silang awayan. Huwag, na, huwag natin silang sampalin <laughs> uh, literally. But, ayun nga, Um, should be patient with them kasi ayun but as much as possible try try to call out and correct them ayun here's another uh, question sir why do you think people became critical towards historians and journalists where do you think the conspiracy that historians and journalists are hiding and distorting the truth and facts came from okay. actually itong phenomenon ng conspiracy theories is not Um, it's not exclusive or it's not unique in the Philippines. Um, other countries, for example, in the United States, especially, may ano, very mataas yung, ano dyan, yung, yung conspiracy theories trend. Uh, it's a global, unfortunately, it's a global phenomenon na ang roots yan. There is this somewhat distrust in authority say especially yung mga experts etc sasabihin na bayaran yung mga historians, mga scholars, yung mga scientists. Okay, this applies not just for example here sa atin about martial law. This also includes climate change. Ayun that sinasa- they, some people say climate change is not real or vaccines are poison and or vaccines are just money making schemes ganun. So ayun it. It's a global phenomenon and the distrust in experts in science and history um, is ano is somewhat is cynicism taken to unhealthy levels kumbaga so ayun nga ang problem is ano rin um, it's a global crisis in critical thinking ayun especially in the time na of the internet na kung saan information is readily available but our ability to process information is limited. Ibig sabihin, 21st century skill yung critical thinking or choosing which source or which narrative to believe. Kumbaga, um, ito yung global challenge in education. Actually, the way we teach history or yung mga subjects natin, like the Rizal or ayun, understanding the self, it should be ideally promoting critical thinking because yung first line of defense natin against conspiracies, pseudo-intellectuals, and fake news, and anti-intellectualism is having our own defense, which is a critical mind. Ayan. So, it should be quest- the ability to question sources. It's the ability to question or break down narratives. Yun yung skills. Ayan. Hindi siya memorization ng, ano, ng facts, really. Kasi we cannot teach everything rin eh. We cannot cover everything in one semester on Philippine history. It's really enhancing the student skills in in doing research, fact-checking, 
and ayun, analyzing events. So, ayun, yung conspiracies na tayo daw ay may tinatago, yung mga teacher daw ay ano, ay mali yung tinuturo, etc. and stuff of that, it's a combination of many factors which includes ayun nga, uh, the phenomenon of conspiracy theories, the proliferation of fake news and even yung ano, yung politically motivated distortion talaga. Thank you, sir. I think as historians, there is a big challenge or there are big challenges awaiting us um, after not only after this election, but in the years to come. Here's another one. How does one even consider voting when the majority of the people have decided to vote for known incompetent and corrupt officials? Your take, sir. Okay, your vote counts. Ayun. So, hindi ibig sabihin na porket sa feeling nyo ay ano ay mukhang mananalo siya hindi ibig sabihin na ano yun yung isang problem eh. it's like we treat the election sa sabong some scholars said na the way Filipinos treat elections ay parang tumataya sa sabong so we vote who we think will win not based on what we want or what that person upholds which is something that we should be revising we should be changing our mindset when it comes sa election So your vote counts kasi yun nga elections is a is a battleground of narratives as well as it's a battleground of misinformation and propaganda. Ayun. So uh it's an ano it's an information war, it's a propaganda war na ano it will try to make you lose hope in your candidate. Ayun, it's part of that. So you should be sticking to it and as much as possible campaign for what is good and what is true. Ayun, and minsan kasi perception is not real. Eh. Ayun. So, yun nga, uh, ayun, I highly suggest that you watch ano, uh, The Kingmaker and it's available in multiple languages and I think yes. ano, you're in... I think it's shown now on YouTube, it's available for everybody. Yes, and in multiple languages. Ayun. Even Bisaya and ayun, Tagalog and English. The original is English. So, watch it. The problem is that Uh, some people believe that perception is real. Mm-hmm. Just like what the former first yeah. lady said, perception is real, the truth is not. The truth is not. <laughs> But yun nga eh, the truth is the truth. And knowing the truth, no matter how hard it is, will set us free. But yun nga, going back doon sa moth and the flame, okay? it's not the light or the flame that will kill you. It's yung mga taong nakikinabang sa dilim niyan. So, ayun nga, stand your ground, look for what is true and what is the light and stick to it, campaign for it, okay? Spread the truth, be the light, okay? And not be part of the darkness. Ayan. Okay, uh, we're going down to the last two questions. There are a lot actually, but we have to see through it since we are... We don't have much time. Here's another one. May I know what's your take on this particular statement? Emotion is one of the main drivers of disinformation. In fact, a more insidious form of disinformation uses emotional flow to sell a message. What can be done or what is an effective response to counter disinformation that uses emotional flow? So emotional attacks, yun, it's a weapon and part of the propaganda war. Okay, usually um, certain disinformation capitalizes on hate. Okay, on the emotion of hate. Yan. Usually kasi yun, they use people, institutions as scapegoats. Okay, ibig sabihin, they blame one person, they blame one family, they blame one, ano, to the problems in society. So, they foster this, this emotion of hate. Ayun, and this is something that we should be guarding against then. Ayun, um, yung emotional attack, ayun, ayun, part ng critical thinking is, ano nga, is the ability to process one's emotions. Okay, and seeing through all the haze, all the rage, etc. And be conscious or being able to see clearly and read between the lines. So, una, una sa lahat, we should be flagging uh, messages and narratives that foster hate against a particular group of people, especially including intellectuals, yung mga 
Yung mga, mga historians daw, mga sinungaling daw kami, mga teachers so mali yung tinuturo sa inyo. Yung ganitong pamilya, sila yung may kasalanan kung bakit bumagsak yung Pilipinas, yung people power was a mistake, ganyan. So, yan, usually they capitalize on hate. Eh. Ayun. But, ayun, um, it's a powerful emotion na wala tayong masyadong magagawa until mawala yung raging emotion na yan. Yun nga, minsan, huwag tayong magpapabulag sa sa rage. Kasi rage blinds us. Eh. Ayun. At hindi natin makikita yung yung light. And in a way, um, Okay, um, the ability to see through all the rage and siguro spread the message out of, ano, okay, the only thing that can fight rage or can fight hate is, ano eh, is love and hope eh. Ayan. So it might sound metaphysical or it might sound um, masyadong idealistic, but love and, ano, yun nga, sabi nga, radical nga daw yung pag ano pag mamahal etc but ayan eh uh, it's the only thing that can fight hate siguro it's also an opportunity to ano to reflect on our selves and our, and certainly on our beliefs ayun kasi baka ang nangyayari is that there is this what we call um um yung internal incongruence or ano yung um i forgot the psychological term na ano Cognitive, cognitive dissonance. dissonance, yes. And cognitive dissonance na, ano, yun nga, for example, we are halimbawa, we are we believe in a certain religion which uh, believes in the truth, the way, the light. Ayan, we believe in love, loving one's neighbor. Pero yung sinusuportahan natin at yung pinaniniwalaan nating narratives espouses hate and violence against a particular group of people. Ayan, so, yun nga, uh, being critical of the narratives and being critical of ourselves Ayun, uh, we should be realizing what are the non-negotiables that we have, okay? And what are the things that are important <clears throat> in our society? Ayun, which is basically, you know, democracy, pag-ibig, ayun, katotohanan, katarungan, ayun. Love, hope, truth, peace, and justice. Yun yung mga dapat which natin i are found in our, in our um, constitutions, actually. Yes. Okay, and these things are worth dying for and fighting for. Ayan. And our heroes showed the way. Okay? They showed that the Filipino can fight and die for these ideals. Ayan. Kaya maganda yung, ano, yung isang re-evaluation of how we view our past. That our heroes were not talunan. They are not losers. Because they showed us that we can fight and win for the values that we hold dear. But unfortunately, for us in the present, dahil naniwala tayo sa fake news, we throw away these values. Okay? We tell ourselves na maliit tayo, talunan tayo, mahina tayo. Kailangan natin ng isang tao na magliligtas sa atin. It's not a good messaging. It's not a good narrative for the elections. We don't need a savior because we ourselves, if we, if we, know, the, if we know the truth, then we can save ourselves. Thank you, sir. Um, in fact, it's, it's a good thing to note that we have to ask ourselves every time we read something on, on the internet, does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel happy, inspired, angry? Uh, I remember there's one media channel that asks us that question at the end of every article, and I think that helps. That's a check on our emotions. Mm, now, on yeah. the final, and, uh, final question, there are a lot more, but we have to... Um, sift through it as we said uh, thank you prof for this enlightening presentation my question is in your presentation you discussed the power of narratives quoting ben okri to poison a nation poison its stories do you believe that the troll farms of a certain candidate is poisoning us yes because uh, it poisons our values eh, that Yun nga, like what I mentioned earlier that ano, uh, that those certain narratives uh, it's a mistake na we ousted that family we we engage in people power we engage in democratic struggle kumbaga uh, saying that democracy is wrong freedom is a mistake 
Ganyan. What we need is discipline. What we need is a father figure to discipline us. Ayan. So, yung troll farms who spread that kind of messaging, it's actually not just a distortion of history, it's a distortion of values. Ayan. Na, yun nga, sinasabi na in a democratic society kasi we are the ones in power. We are the ones powerful. Hopefully, we make the right choices. But, yun nga, uh, certain narratives say that, ayun, we need a savior, okay, because there's uh, a problem is caused by a person. You should hate that person, that family, or that group of people. Ayun, and then you need us so that we can save the nation, to unify the nation, to save the nation, or ayun, to bring back the old golden age or the golden days, which is actually non-existent. Kasi yun yung fake history, eh. yun yung distorted history. So, ayun, uh, ayun, poise, the nature of the narratives themselves, ayun, it's a wrong history. It's a poison. To, like, uh, ano, it provides a wrong understanding of our society. It provides a wrong understanding of our values. It provides a wrong understanding of the problems. So, therefore, tulad nga in a medical field, wrong history can kill us. Ayun. And yun nga, poison narratives are a poison to our nation. So that's why yun nga, hopefully ay mapigilan natin sila. And at, or, at, or kahit man lang, hindi na tayo maging kakuntsaba nila. Ayan. Thank you very much, Professor Ramos, for the answers to the questions of our participants. And to our participants, thank you for actively engaging yourselves, especially in the comment section and in the chat box. And we appreciate that. So our final words before we end our session? Uh, sige. Um, siguro, yun lang. Um, let's be critical of the narratives okay? On, in our society. Uh, we should be um, looking into ourselves. Okay, It's a time to question who we want as a, as our leaders who we want as a society and even ayun, who we want to be as a nation would it be a nation na mahina who lacks trust in ourselves in our capacity who needs to rely on a strong leader on a strong man or do we create a society where in tayo mga Pilipino okay, we are part of the solution Okay? We are. We have a hopeful future as long as we make the right choices, as we move towards justice, we believe in the truth, okay? and we care for each other. Yan. We are humane. We care for each other. So in the end, the challenge natin is yung pagiging makatwiran in the way that we think. It's not just being critical. It's pagiging matuwid. It's pagiging makatwiran. It's being righteous. Uh, based on the values that are important to us as a nation and as a people. Ayan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daghang. Salamat, Professor Ramos, for sharing what you have just given to us um, in this session. This is the third session of the Urian Voters Education Webinar Series. We also thank our participants again for your active engagement in our discussion. And I hope the discussion doesn't end here. You can still discuss it among yourselves after our Zoom session. We would like to award this certificate of appreciation to our speaker. Let me read the text. Father Saturnino Urius University presents this certificate of appreciation to Professor John J. Ramos, for his invaluable service and contribution as resource speaker in the session Historical Revisionism and its implication on the voters' decision during the Urian Voters Education Webinar Series held online on April 28, 2022. Given this day, 28th of April, at Father Saturnino Urius University, Butuan City, Philippines. Signed, Reverend Father James Michael M. Abilianosa, Director, Student and Alumni Affairs, Ms. Donna Esperta, Dean, Academic Arts and Sciences Program, Engineer Zenaida de Azura, Vice President for Administrative and Student Affairs, and Reverend Father Randy Jasper C. Ochige, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Research. We will send you, sir, the soft copy of the certificate soonest.
And we would like to remind our participants that there is one last session in the Urian Voters Education Series, and that will be tomorrow, the fourth and last session. And our speaker will be Miss Bernadette Reyes of GMA7. She will tackle fake news and the 2022 national elections. To get your certificate of appreciation, you are requested to answer the evaluation. The link is provided in the comment section or in the chat box. For our game, the post test is already given in your FSUU Learn. Please look for it in your notifications if you cannot see the folder. The top five winners will be announced tomorrow, uh, winners for today. And just to give you a teaser, we'll be giving out some merch tomorrow as prizes, and that is um, courtesy of our speaker for tomorrow. For the G students, take a screenshot of your score in the game and upload it in your respective GE class. You will earn points for each upload because that serves as your assessment, as well as um, a copy, soft copy of your certificate of participation. So that will be proof that you indeed participated and you did not just join the game without participating in this session. We would like to thank the faculty members of the Social Sciences Division, our speaker, Professor John Ray Ramos, Ms. Donna Esperta, Father James Michael Abilenosa, Dr. Charlene Alegre, Mr. Lyndon Boque, Political Science and Economic Society, HumeServe and Psych Society, Communicators Guild, Urian Publication, FSUU Supreme Student Government, and the Strategic Communications Office. And that's the third session of our Urian Voters Education Series. We have learned a lot today that we can never attain unity if that unity is based on lies and propaganda. And it was also good to know that we have to be critical of the narratives because if narratives are propagated, believed, and legitimized, that can dictate our values, that can dictate our nation's values. We all have biases, for sure we have that, but it's important to acknowledge it. And as our professor said earlier, we have to minimize it and treat it if we could. Our biases are tied to the values that are most important to us. As Filipinos, we believe in the rule of law, and regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace. You can find that in our preamble. So let us not forget to put these things into consideration as we reflect and discern who are the candidates who should be leading us in the next six years. Take some time. This is a very important election. You know, character development does not happen overnight. It's okay to make a mistake. So from that mistake, we move on and we choose what is right. After all, we are Uryans and we always let our light shine. Thank you very much. This has been Rochelle Valencia of, of the Social Sciences Division with Friday Hadumas as our technical assistant and all the people behind the scene in this Urian Voters um, education webinar series. We thank you and see you on our last session tomorrow at 1.30 here on the same channel. Thank you. Ugmaayong hapon sa tanan.